guys and welcome to another video for ESS where we have a look in detail at the nine point mini essay or extended answer question. Here we'll be specifically looking at the section of mark bands that deals with the way that you use case studies. For the upper grade the mark band specifies the candidate uses well explained examples that are balanced and show insightful analysis. So here we need to think carefully about the difference between describe and apply. Of course, any case study you use does require specific detail and descriptions. However, these details and descriptions by themselves can only take your grade so far. For the higher grade levels, you will need to apply the case study specifically to the essay question. So it can actually be quite hard to distinguish between describing a case study and applying it to the essay question. This is particularly the case in an examination situation where you will be under pressure. It can also be the case where you are planning your essay answers at home as past questions. In this case you are likely to have available to you lots of case study information. So it is so it's tempting in these examples just to give lots of case study information without applying. So as I said before it can be quite hard to distinguish between describing a case study and applying it to the question. Not only to the question but to the specific requirements of the question. So let's take another look at our previous question that we looked at in a previous video. You will see that we derived knowledge statements from the original question. The first knowledge question, knowledge statement, was EIAs help protect the environment by identifying problems before the project even starts and suggest more sustainable practices at each stage. The Three Gorges Dam might be an appropriate case study, but remember, specifically for this question, we're not actually looking at the Three Gorges Dam itself, but instead its environmental impact assessment. So the Three Gorges Dam is the largest hydroelectric dam development in the world, located on the Yangtze River in the People's Republic of China. Construction began in 1993 and the dam was fully operational in 2009. So by the time you watch this video it has been in operation for at least a decade. Before the project went ahead, there was a full environmental impact assessment. Project engineers estimated that the dam could generate an eighth of the country's electricity. This energy would be produced without the release of harmful greenhouse gases. So we can see in this case, there are significant environmental and economic advantages to the Three Gorges Dam project. In addition, the Chinese government also cited other improvements that the development would, would produce. Specifically, reduced seasonal flooding, which can be seen in these images. And an increase in development, economic development along the edges of the new reservoir. So again, we can see how the project feeds into economic sustainability. In addition, the environmental impact assessment was required to look at the potential ecosystem disruption. The relocation of large numbers of people in the flooded area and the social consequences of this resettlement. The environmental action plan did look at these in detail. In particular, it looked at the social effects of resettlement and the economic effects that this could have. The effects of sedimentation behind the river or behind the dam, which could reduce water speed, and the effects of landslide 
from the increased geological pressure from rising water and the potential of earthquakes. The environmental impact assessment also determined that there are 47 endangered species in the Three Gorges Dam area that will be even more endangered if the project were to go ahead. These include the Chinese river dolphin and the Chinese sturgeon. Furthermore, the report did identify economic problems as well as the environmental problems that a disruption of the ecosystem would cause. For example, the physical barrier of the dam would interfere with fish spawning and in combination with pollution could be uh, have a serious impact on the fishing industry in the Yangtze River. In terms of social costs, um, the dam would uh, flood 13 cities, 140 towns, 1,352 villages and 100,000 acres of China's most fertile land. So there was a significant economic cost beyond just building the dam. Two million people had to be resettled by 2020 and four million people by, sorry, by 2012 um, and four million people by 2020. Geological problems, as we said before, include the growing wish of landslides and the increased chance of earthquakes. So the report did identify a number of environmental problems, social problems and economic problems. So let's go back to our knowledge statement. Our first knowledge statement was EIAs help protect the environment by identifying problems before the project even starts and suggest more sustainable practices at each stage. So this doesn't necessarily mean, however, that because an environmental impact assessment has taken place, once it's identified the environmental damage, it doesn't necessarily mean the project, it's, project itself will not go ahead. Instead, the environmental impact assessment looks at the degree of these problems and decides if they're overall they are worth making sacrifices. The environmental impact assessment also suggests alternatives or mitigation strategies. That strategy is to reduce the negative impacts. Once the environmental impact assessment was completed, the overall view of the people responsible for the development was that the environmental and social problems did not reduce the feasibility of the project and that the positive impacts on the environment and national economy outweighed any negative impacts. However, the environmental impact assessment did, uh, did show changes that need to be made, made to the project and mitigation strategies. So really, it's a case of weighing up the pros and cons. So let's go back and have a think about our knowledge, uh, knowledge um, question number two knowledge statement number two. EIAs are not effective as there's no standardised practice or minimum standards. So from country to country and even within countries depending on who was overseeing the project there are different standards and procedures. This undermines the overall concept of an EIA. Do you think having different standards and different procedures can cause problems and could cause lo could cause some projects to go ahead in some locations have a think about that so e EIAs have suffered lots of criticism over the years poor public consultation process poorly written reports costly ineffective and time-consuming practices. Very limited scope, just focusing on the more obvious, effect, of obvious environmental impacts of the project, not seeing the wider picture. There's even been allegations that some reports were, some impacts were understated or even omitted from reports.
there's also a problem with the lack of standards practice uh, lack of standards and practice training for practitioners the lack of clear definitions of systems and boundaries and the lack of inclusion of the indirect impacts in this image you can see the idea that there's lots of cooks spoiling the broth but because none of the cooks or none of the people on the board uh, would actually have clear guidelines as practitioners they would not be particularly effective so what we've tried to do here is not actually look at the uh, case study itself we're not actually looking at the environmental impacts of the Three Gorges Dam instead what we are doing is we're looking at the EIA we were thinking about the EIA and looking in a balanced way the way the EIA actually helped identify problems, suggest solutions, suggest mitigation strategies, but ultimately did the EIA get the balance right? That balance between the pros and cons. This is where you will bring in your insightful analysis. In your opinion, did the EIA work effectively enough? And what we mean by that is did it make help the project to make environmental choices that were beneficial? Was it worth going through the process or was the process pointless? So this is where you bring your balance and your insightful analysis to the analysis to the situation. So moving back to where we started. I hope this video has shown you that there is a big difference between describing a case study and applying the case study to the specific questions. Applying the case study to not only the specific, the specific questions, but the specific knowledge statements that we've derived from that question. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I do hope it helps you to understand how you can access the higher grade boundaries. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Thanks for listening.